want you to know my name is Scott Schmerlson, Mr. Scott, and I am your LAUSD school board member. So you may be thinking, what is a school board member? Well, let me tell you, I get to work with people like your teachers and your principals uh, to make sure that the schools here in Los Angeles are even stronger than ever. And whether I have things done like fixing the cracks on your playground or, or helping your school to purchase new iPads or the best part, I was the guy who brought chocolate milk back to the cafeteria. So you may remember me for that, the chocolate milk school board member. So uh, uh, I'm, it's a pleasure to be here. So on this screen, you'll find a map of Board District 3, and that's in white, okay? I represent the area shaded in white. And for each of those dots, it represents a school. And I am so excited to share that students from over 40 elementary schools across the whole San Fernando Valley are joining us this afternoon. And some of our biggest joiners are Capistrano Elementary, Beckford Elementary, Vintage Magnet, Riverside Drive Charter School, and Colfax Elementary School. So, so boys and girls, take a moment to think about what neighborhood your school is in. Just think about that. What neighborhood is your school in? So, like I said, my name is Mr. Scott. And I'd love to know more about who is joining us this afternoon. So students, would you please type your first name in the Zoom chat? And if you could, I'd love to know what grade you are and what school. So could you do that now? Your first name, your grade, and what school you are. Let's see if we can do that. Oh, cool. Oh boy, I see Sam at Balboa Magnet, Elijah, third grade at Lincoln. Very nice. Very nice. Benjamin and Amy, first and third grade. All right, I wonder what school Benjamin and Amy go to. It's okay, I know you're in first and third grade. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Porter Ranch is my area. Porter Ranch is Board District 3. I see Dominic Monroy at, uh, oh, it's going so fast. I think it said Riverside, it went so fast. Oh, I can't read them that fast. But thank you, thank you guys for participating. That's really great. That's really great. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. So now it is my pleasure to introduce some very special speakers. And students, please join me in welcoming Mr. Jonathan, Miss Cambria, and Miss Krista from Cedar Sinai's Share and Care program. They get to work with students just like you in over 30 LAUSD elementary and middle schools. And I know them because they worked at my school when I was a principal. Share and Care at Cedar sinai is the best program you could ever have at your school. So I will now turn it over to Mr. Jonathan. Mr. Scott, thank you so much. And I didn't know that you were the chocolate milk person. So I am the wonderful. chocolate milk man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. And thank you if Miss Krista and Miss Cambria would wave your hands as well. I'm so happy that you're all here today. So to get us started, I want everybody, every single one of the students watching to put your hands out and wiggle your fingers. And Mr. Scott, Miss Krista, Miss Cambria, wiggle your fingers and then turn your thumbs so they're facing the ground. There you go. Cross those hands together and try to interlace your fingers there if you can. And are you able to wiggle your little pinkies there? 
Wiggle, oh, you're doing good. And Miss Krista, will you raise yours up just a little bit there so we can all see it? Everybody doing this at home, how about wiggling your first finger? Wiggle that first finger. All right, and wiggle the thumbs. And then everybody slowly turn your hand so it's facing upwards. Uh-oh, I'll tell you what, it's, it's okay that it didn't work out. This was actually just a little trick that I played on you. Um, oh. I, I, but I played it in the nicest way. I just wanted to remind us that sometimes things don't work out the way that we're hoping they would work out. How many of you were not expecting this whole last part of the year to be at home being remote through school. I know, yes, I, I think most of us here. <laughs> um, but when things don't work out the way we want, and especially now, even some of you are going back to school, some of you are still at home, but we can have all kinds of big feelings around that. And they could be feelings of, you know, for some it's, it's a little disappointed, some are happy. Some are sad and there can be all kinds of feelings in between. So when we have these big feelings, one of the best things that we can do is to name the feeling, say it out loud or write it down or draw a picture of it. There's an expression, if you can name the feeling, you can tame it. So when we have big feelings like sadness, if we name the sadness, it gets a little smaller. I like to say you get the feeling outside so we can feel better on the inside. So we're gonna take a poll to see during this time of being remote, what big feelings you've had. And while we're doing this poll, I've actually asked my friends, Miss Krista, Miss Cambria, and Mr. Scott to share the feelings they've had. So Miss Cambria, would you mind going first and sharing your feeling? Yes, so my big feeling was I felt exhausted. I felt tired. And here's my drawing of feeling tired. Oh, I like the Z's. Thank you, Miss Cambria. Miss Krista, what feelings have you had? So I actually felt sad because I didn't really get to say goodbye to any of the students I work with or the people I knew at the school. Um, and I still haven't gotten a chance to, say, to see them again. So I definitely felt sad. Thank you. And I like your sad picture as well. <laughs> Mr. Scott, would you share your feeling? Well, um, I had mixed feelings because at first I was worried. I was really worried. But then... As soon as we got back to school, I was happy. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get back to school. And I love your happy picture. That's Thank great. You. Thank you. <laughs> well, and I drew a feeling too. I too had mixed feelings. But as we were starting to go back to school, I felt a little nervous. I just, I didn't know what was going to happen. And sometimes not knowing makes you feel a little nervous. And so it's interesting, as we look at the poll, it looks like a lot of our friends that are online have had the similar types of feelings. We have some that were happy, but we have sad, excited, angry, a few that were worried, some were calm, some were nervous, and then we have a small number that had a different feeling there. So. Thank you all for sharing all of your different feelings. And although naming the feeling is one of the feelings that we can have, um, or one of the ways to deal with the feelings we have, there's another way to deal with feelings. And I'm excited to tell you, Miss Krista was the one that taught me this way of dealing with feelings. And we can add this one to our big feelings toolbox as well. This is called cookie breathing. So if you wouldn't mind, Miss Krista, would you please share with all of us about cookie breathing? Yes, definitely. Thank you, Mr. Jonathan. So for our cookie breathing, we get to use our senses and our imagination. 
Um, so we're going to imagine our most favorite cookie in our hand and it's still warm it just came out of the oven mm. um, but it's still cool enough to hold and we're gonna take a deep breath in through our nose and smell the cookie and we're gonna take a deep breath out and cool it down so let's th try that three times together all right so let's breathe in Two. And three. All right, thank you for joining me in that. Those, that breathing can help us feel a little bit calmer and a little bit more focused. Thank you, Miss Krista. I actually really could smell the cookie as I was doing it. You've made me hungry, but thank you. <laughs> me too. <laughs> what a great technique. I felt a little more relaxed at the end. Thank you for that one. The next exercise, which is just another way to help us deal with our feelings, is called the five senses. Now, I don't know if you can think of the five senses, but what the five senses are, it's the taste, smell, hearing, touching, and seeing. So with the five senses, we are going to all go through the five senses so that we can show you how we use our five senses to just help us calm down. So the first one is the sense of taste. You may have seen this before. It's a small orange, it's a mandarin. And with the mandarin, I love these. If you take it, mm, it's really juicy mandarin, but notice all the taste. It tastes sweet. Ah, it makes the, the back of my mouth squirt out. It's like a little tart. But as I notice that, I'm thinking about my taste and the big feeling I had before is not as big. So now, Cambria, if you would talk to us about smell. For, so for smell, I have lotion. And this is good because we can take it on the go with us. I'm going to put some lotion in my hands. And as I smell the lotion, it smells like cherries, which helps me to calm down and just center myself. I love it. Thank you. And... Let's see, we have um, Krista who was going to, Miss Krista was going to talk to us about hearing and listening. Yes, so I actually have a little singing bowl here and when I tap it, it's a sound that helps us feel a little bit more centered. And that's one, a big sound. Sometimes it's also helpful to hear even the littlest sounds to really focus and like right now I hear the wind going through the leaves on the tree outside. That's great thank you. I love hearing the wind through the trees. I love nature especially as we've been in so much. Mr. Scott you were going to show us about touch. Yes. <laughs> I love to touch my little doggy. It makes me feel so calm. And the doggy likes it too. Just gently touch your doggy. It's just great. Does your doggy have a name? Yeah, this one's name is Nemo. And then Ringo gets jealous. So let me bring <laughs> Ringo over here. Yes, yes, I'll pet Ringo too. It feels so good. It's so relaxing to pet your pet. It really is. It feels so good. So that's my way. I love it. Thank you. And the last one is seeing. And I have this ball. I want you to see how many colors you can see in it. And sometimes you can even see my picture upside down. Yeah. But just by noticing the colors and noticing things that we see. And you can do this again in nature. Look at the trees outside. See how the, the wind hits the leaves and that they move. And in the same way, by going through each of these senses, 
it calms the body down. I even noticed each of us were talking just a little bit slower. So that's great. Thank you all for helping me with that. Now, how many of you know who this is? Oh, I think, go ahead, Mr. Scott. I think he's on the dollar bill. I, I think he, that's Washington, George Washington. It definitely looks like George Washington, although it's a little interesting when we turn George Washington right side up, Ooh. it looks like George Washington's been with the pandemic. He has little bags under his eyes. He's exhausted. He's a bad day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason I show you this is somebody has taken this picture in Photoshop. They've changed it. They've moved the eyes upside down and the mouth upside down. But our brain thinks it's the same. We actually think that this is George Washington. But the truth of the matter is, is when we turn it right side up, it looks different. And so what we can do is when we um, have things that we think are going to be the same, but they're different, well, it can make us a little anxious, a little disturbed, just like going back to the schools. Going back to the schools, we think they're going to be the same, but they're a little bit different. So by using these coping skills, like the five senses, like the cookie breathing, and the other ones we're gonna give you, it's like magic. And then all of a sudden, it seems like George Washington looks all right again. Oh, yes. And that's what we can just remember when we're going back to the schools that we have tools. That's our hope for today, to give you tools that you can use when we have these big feelings. So I wanna give you another one. A great coping skill that we can use is talking to friends, family, and teachers. Just like naming our feelings or drawing the feelings on paper can help us feel better. When we share what we're thinking or feeling with someone and someone that we really trust, that also helps us to feel better. So I would like for each of you to think of someone who you trust that you would share your big feelings with the next time you have them. And when you think of that name, write that name or have the adult with you, write that name in chat. And I would like for us to think about who would we share our big feelings with? Um, Ms. Krista, do you mind sharing? I know I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> That is okay. So I would share my big feelings with my mom. That's something that's really important to me and someone I trust. That's wonderful. And Miss Cambria. I would share my big feelings with my friend, Haiti. She is someone I can trust as well. I love it. I love that you named your friend, Mr. Scott. Yes, I like to share my big thoughts with uh, my sister. Iris, um, easy to talk to, good listener, and gives good advice. Thank you. Family really helps. And a lot of times that's the first person that I go to is my family. When I'm just having feelings, I feel uncomfortable or it's just overwhelming, I go to family. But I'll tell you, I have, just like Mr. Scott, you had your little dogs. Well, I, I have a cat a real live cat, not to say anything bad about your little dogs, but my cat, I love to talk to my cat <laughs> because sometimes just having that little conversation is helpful. And the next coping skill that we have is daily routines. By creating a daily routine, it's helpful. And Miss Cambria wanted to share this with you. Thank you. So there are times when we'll experience change in our lives. I know sometimes when, when there's too big of a change, I can feel uneasy. I feel nervous, sometimes I feel frustrated because I don't know what's going on. But I have found creating a daily routine helps me feel better. So this may include me waking up in the morning, washing my face, eating breakfast, brushing my teeth, getting dressed, making sure all my materials are ready for school, and now I'm on my way ready to learn. Having a daily routine is a great way for us when we are experiencing change in our lives. 
at least for me, it has been very helpful. Thank you, Ms. Cambria. And I wanted to give you a chance to go because when I had asked for all of our participants to put the names in the chat, they were putting so many in. And I just want to recognize some of those. So many people said their mom, their dad, somebody else said that they have a cat too. Thank you for putting that. People named their friends, James. So having specific tools or specific people we can go to really can make a difference. And I agree with you, Cambria, by having that daily routine, it's helpful for us. All of a sudden we know what's next and it can lower anxiety or frustration or any other big feelings that we have. So you what- know, is, Jonathan, I'd like yes. to say that I always like to hang around positive people because positive people have a positive air that they exude. So stick, stick with positive people. I love that. Yes. Positive people, people that you trust, people that really fill you up. Thank you for sharing that, Mr. Scott. And you are leading us right into our last tip, which is practicing kindness and gratitude. Now, gratitude is a big word, and sometimes people have different ideas about it. So asking our panelists here, any idea, Ms. Cambria, Ms. Krista, what does gratitude mean to you? Um, for me, gratitude means being thankful for the people that are in my life, for the things that I have, um, taking a moment to remember that. Nice. For me, gratitude is being appreciative for what I have. So if my mom, my brother, my sister, when they're helping me, I'm feeling grateful. I'm showing gratitude by saying thank you to them. And it makes me feel very appreciative. And I appreciate them as well. And Mr. Scott, when you're practicing gratitude or you're in gratitude and you're feeling thankful and grateful, how do you feel inside? Well, I, I feel great when I, when I do that. And I'll give you the example of my, the, the letter carrier. You know, I always say to her, thank you. Thank you for delivering the mail today. And she's so happy that I said, thank you. Uh, gratitude means a lot and it makes her day. I know it does. It really does. And so my challenge to each one of you is when you get up in the morning to say good morning with a smile, good morning. And when you go to bed at night to say good night with a smile, good night. <laughs> just by the act of doing that, it helps us to feel better. And just like Mr. Scott shared, it really helps other people to feel better. Right. So we want to thank you so much, Mr. Scott, for having us here, and I will now turn it back to you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Jonathan, Miss Cambria, Miss Krista. I learned so much. I learned so many tricks this afternoon, tips and tricks. And the next time I am feeling overwhelmed, I'm going to give cookie breathing a try. But I may use a real cookie. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Jonathan, because after my breathing, I can eat it. So that's a good tip. So if there are any parents joining us uh, this afternoon, um, I hope that we have helped your child uh, this afternoon. And I want you to know that School Mental Health is hosting workshops for parents throughout the month of May. And there are two sessions, parents on stress management, and emotional well-being coming up on May 18th and May 25th. And I also want to mention that LAUSD's Student and Family Wellness Hotline continues to operate weekdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And it doesn't matter whether you're seeking consultation or seeking referrals or, or support, there are mental health professionals on standby ready to assist. And again, a big thank you to our presenters, Mr. Jonathan, Miss Krista, and Miss Cambria. I really do appreciate your making and your taking the time to share and care for our students this afternoon. So families on the screen, you'll find the link to the website and YouTube page. Uh, they have posted tons of resources and clips that I encourage you to check out. 
So a recording of today's program will be available shortly on my Facebook page in case you want to rewatch or share with friends. So students, I am so happy you could join us this afternoon. I hope you learned something new today. And if you see me visiting your school in the future, don't hesitate and say hello. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you.